Hi there, in this screencast we'll use triple uh, zero web hosts database management to access PHP my admin to uh, look at the database we have created we will create a table with some fields with constraints uh, using SQL statements I'm not going to actually look at anything on the website, so I can just leave this and just go to triple zero web host and sign, if, sign in if I need to. And I'll sign in. And I'll manage my website. And I'll go to Tools, Database Manager. Here's my one database. We get two with the free hosting. I'll manage that via PHP MyAdmin. Now I'll eventually be using this table alongside an HTML form. So I'm just going to keep it lean so that uh, we don't need to do too much work in the future. So um, we could create a table via, I'll make sure I'm in the, the right database first of all. I could use this button here to create a table, give it a name and go, but I'll just do everything with my SQL statement so you can take a look at what SQL statements are. So it's just create. Notice when I start typing, I get an autocomplete there. And I want a table. And this table will be called customers. So you should always have a customers table on every website you create. And then we use brackets. Uh, sorry, just plain brackets. Shift 9. And I'll just close them here. Shift 0. And then I'll put all of my field names and their constraints, uh, sorry, their data types and their constraints um, on the next lines. So first of all, I need, every table should have an ID. So basically um, for customers, it'll be the customer number. If you're creating transactions, which are then linked to customers, then they would be the invoice ID or something like that. So I'm just gonna call it ID. I'm only gonna have one table in my example, so I don't have to say, cust ID otherwise I would and it's an integer so we can't have half of a customer and we're gonna have up to six characters so we can uh, once we reach a million customers we'll have to change that to seven unsigned means uh, no um, negative values so we can't have negative customer numbers auto increment that means th these numbers are generated automatically so the first customer that we add will be zero, the second will be one, so on. And if we, um, if we delete customers, by the way, so if, if you delete customer one, the next customer will still be customer two. And primary key, uh, this is uh, the unique identifier. So customer number in the customer table, invoice number in the sales table, etc. This is a little bit of database theory, but we don't have to worry about it too much. Now, I'm also going to have name. In real life, you'd have first name, last name, so you could sort by those. And it's going to be bar car. And we can have up to, we'll say, 30 characters in a name. And it's required. Not null. And we'll have an email. And you saw my email address. It's probably like 100 characters. I'll say 100 characters. It's also required. And I'm going to add a registration date. So that we can do a query and see what information has been when it was last updated and then prompt for an update. 
So it's going to be a timestamp. So automatically generated current current timestamp. And if this information changes, it'll get a new timestamp. New timestamp. So that should be, sorry, default current timestamp. Default current timestamp. If anything changes, we'll get a new timestamp. And notice that we have a comma terminating each field. This is the last field, so it doesn't get a comma. You can try adding one and see what happens. So that will create a table with uh, basically four columns, aka fields. And uh, this one will be automatically generated. This one will be automatically generated. Those two will be populated from a form eventually. So I'll go ahead and go. And everything looks good. If I look at my structure now, you see that we have a table called customers. And I'll go ahead and browse it. We've got ID, name, email, reg date. Now let's quickly add some data and then query the database for some data. So I'll just quickly add um, maybe three pieces of data. So we use the insert into. So we're going to say insert into customers. And then we specify the field names that we want to insert data into. We're only inserting data into two. If we were inserting, inserting data into all four, we wouldn't have to specify the names. But it's only two, so we do have to specify the names because ID and reg data are uh, automatically completed. So I'll say name and email. And values in the same arrangement. So I'll say Bob Smith. Oops, we need quotes. Bob Smith and email say bob at email.com and we go and it looks good and I'll just do two more here so again I'll go back to my SQL you can do it via the insert column here but I'm going to choose get auto saved query so that's a little handy utility. I'll say Joe Schmo at joe at email.com and go and go. And now if I look at the structure, I have Sorry, if I choose browse, I have these three pieces of information. I did uh, do a trial one before I ran the video. That's why I'm at ID number two. You can't change those IDs. They're auto automatically incremented. So if I delete Sally Smith, again, the next customer will be number five. Um, and notice there's the reg date automatically added. So let's quickly take a look at how we can uh, query this database. So I want to find um, everybody whose name is Bob Smith. So in order to show the data or query the data in the table, we use the select where statement. So to say select everything, that's what asterisk means, from customers 
where customer, sorry, where name equals in quotes Bob Smith semicolon. And I'll go. So there is Bob Smith. Now, what if Bob Smith's email changes? So for that, we use the update set where statement. So if I go back to my SQL statement here, I'm just going to clear this. I'm going to say update customers. And I'm going to set email. email to equal Bob Smith at website.com where name equals Bob Smith semicolon to terminate the statement. And I'll go. And now I can select all from customers. I'll get rid of that where. And you see Bob Smith's email has changed. So that's a little bit about um, using SQL statements within PHP admin. So again, we created the table with a SQL statement. We inserted data into the table using a SQL statement. We uh, queried the table using a SQL statement, and then we updated the data using a SQL statement. Um, the next screencast will will create a PHP script that gets data from a form um, to put that data into the database, which is, of course, uh, a preferred way of doing things. We'll have a nice user-friendly form. Nobody needs to know how to use any SQL statements. They just enter the data and click on Submit. The data goes into the form, and then it can be retrieved by another document. Thanks so much for watching.